Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1208. Effort equals results. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm a revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from Plano, Texas, Todd Lewis. Todd, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Absolutely, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, yeah, we'll have some fun. Todd Lewis is the engagement marketing strategist for Lexus at their corporate headquarters in beautiful Plano, Texas. He works on customer facing events where guests get to explore and enjoy the Lexus brand. Some of their events include the Lexus Performance Driving School at Laguna Seca Racetrack, Ride and Drive Programs, the Lexus Golf U.S. Open, Lexus Cycling, the Ag Men Tour in California, the Pebble Beach Concours, of course, SEMA, and many, many others. Todd has been in the motorsports and automotive space since 1994, where he worked with Marlboro Team Penske and others. He's also worked with Toyota on IndyCar, MA Supercross, and a multitude of other fun automotive shows and events. So, Todd, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment, share a little more about your career and a very obvious passion for automobiles? Absolutely, Mark. As you mentioned, I'm here in uh, Plano, Texas, uh, Toyota Motor North America. Uh, we were in Torrance forever and then uh, been in Texas for the last couple of years. My primary focus right now is the uh, Lexus Performance Driving School we actually have an event coming up at Laguna Seca, so getting ready uh, for that event uh, coming up. Um, but I've been in cars, motorsports uh, my entire life, kind of bouncing from opportunity to uh, opportunity. And living in California my whole life, uh, changing to Texas, I, I don't have a cowboy hat or, or boots yet, but I'm starting to uh, find my way. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you've got a horse in the backyard or a couple of cows grazing in the fields there, but uh, I've got a lot of family in Texas. Great state, great people in Texas. But yeah, when you come from California and you go to a new, a new cultural experience like that, I think it's a little bit of an adjustment for a California boy, right? Yeah, I mean, I ordered a new Tacoma. They're made in San Antonio, Texas. So I'm trading in my Lexus here in a couple months, but I'm there. Uh, heated steering wheel, heated seats. It's, uh, it's a little bit chilly. It's really crazy because I live out in the suburbs, a little bit north of Plano. And as I drive into work each day, it's a, it's a huge, it's 6,000 people here um, that have moved across country to join the campus here. You'll pass giant fields of, of cows. There's longhorns. You know, if you watch college football just last weekend, um, you know, University of Texas Bevo, there's, you'll see like 10 of those on the way to, to you know, going through town. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, no, we're having fun here. Um, thankfully, uh, with my job, with my opportunities, I'm, I'm on the road. So right now we're kind of gearing up uh, for 2019. Yeah, I'm lucky to uh, hit the road and, and be in front of our guests, be in front of our, our consumers, our enthusiasts uh, at all of our events. No doubt. And, you know, the the uh, automotive marks these days, uh, well, for the last maybe five, six, seven years, it's really changed the way you interact with customers. I love what's happening in the automotive industry. The fact that you're heading out to Laguna Seca to do a drive events with folks, I love that track. That's where I uh, got my racing license with, was at Laguna Seca. It's a great place to go. So you're going to have some fun this year, no doubt. As we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote or a mantra that my guests can share with us. This is a saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success, and it's a really nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars Yeah! in the new year. So, Todd, take the wheel. You know, Mark, um, I've always been open to opportunities. My mom took me to uh, Indy 500 in 1993, and I either wanted to be a race car driver or I wanted to uh, work in, in motorsports. And so uh, Indy 500, walked around, networked with folks, and then got very lucky, lined up an opportunity with our uh, Marble Team Penske. And then, as you know, all of tobacco uh, advertising was kind of pulled at about 97-ish. And so literally bounced uh, from one activation to the next. The Toyota folks were, were right there. And so always keep an open mind, always be open to opportunities. I thought I'd never live in Texas, but uh, here we are today. And so um, you never know where the, where the road is going to travel to. So I've uh, been very fortunate on my journey. 
Absolutely. Well, Texas, you got lower taxes there, lower gas prices there. So that's kind of a nice benefit. Uh, having just been down in Southern California, I know, uh, geez, gas down there was just crazy expensive compared even to where I live, where gas is expensive here too due to the taxes. But, uh, well, it's great. I love it. That's a great quote. And no doubt working at uh, Team Penske, oh my gosh, now there's an organization that you can glean a lot of mantras and great sayings from, no doubt. My mom was kind of the, the patriarch in the family, a uh, single mom, raised me, Had she did a bunch of different jobs. She landed a job with L&M as a distributor. So back then you had like the Camel GT sports oh, cars. Yeah. You had flat track motocro- uh, motorcycle racing on the one mile ovals like Sacramento and the Bay Area. And so I'm like, you know, seven, eight years old and her boss is pretty cool. Uh, he said, hey, you know, you can take time to the event. So I think my first experience was sitting in Mark Donahue's L&M Porsche 917. Oh Gosh, at Laguna wow. Seca. Oh, so wow. I think from that point, I was kind of like, that was my path. Not only do I get to travel to a lot of events representing Lexus, but as an enthusiast myself, my vacation time, I'm usually at the racetrack. And uh, yeah. so very much have, have enjoyed uh, racing through through that path. Yeah, living the passion. Well, my next question was a story that instigated that passion for cars. You may have kind of tipped the the answer to that a little bit with that uh, comment of sitting in Mark Donahue's car. Oh, the, the late, great Mark Donahue. What a driver. Is there a pivotal moment in your life, though, when you knew, you know what, I'm going to be a car guy forever? Well, you know, single child, uh, my mom wouldn't let me race. And she didn't want anything to happen to me. She raced herself. She raced oh, no deep kidding. production Corvettes uh, at oh, Laguna Seca. I did autocrosses around uh, Northern California. She was in Corvette Club. That's how she met my dad. And so um, they uh, kind of parted ways after a couple of years. But so that's where I got it from. But she didn't want me to get hurt. So yeah. she would take me to go-kart track and I could test, I can play, but she wouldn't let me uh, race. And she always had a company car. So I was like eight, nine, 10 years old. You know, I had those big Chevrolets, those big Ford Galaxies, um, and they had a huge bench seat. So I would sit on her lap and steer the car going down the freeway and stuff. <laughs> oh my and so, gosh. You know, back then, you know, you'd probably get thrown in jail or whatever. But so obviously we're going to Laguna Seca. My mom always had a toy car in the garage, you know, so on the weekends, she went through cars like people change shoes. She had Jaguar, she had Porsches, she had Corvette, wow. blonde hair, you know, so she was a California girl. So yeah. she had this 1967 Porsche 912 Red, and it was a manual. And so she said, hey, uh, we're going to Laguna Seca, and she taught me how to drive the manual. Oh, nice. So just jokingly, I'm 12 years old. I'm small. You know, I didn't grow till late in life. So I'm small. And so I said, just jokingly, hey, I'm, I'm going to drive this over to Laguna Seca. She didn't even bat eyes. She goes, all right, sure, fine. So here I am sitting <laughs> on a phone book. She got me a, a twill cap and some smaller Ray-Bans, right? Some yeah. a little bit up. And yeah. I drive us over to uh, Laguna Seca. I'm 12 years old. We uh, took in the races that weekend. And then that, you know, I've every car I've always had is a manual transmission. That's I'm a purist. I, I like to drive cars. Wow. You have coolest mom ever. What a great story. I love it. 12-year-old sitting on a phone book with your tweed cap and sunglasses to give you a little age. Probably she didn't put a fake mustache on you so you could get away with it. So I'm driving, and she looks over, and this is back when it's like, you know, 55 miles an hour. And I'm driving. We lived up in Sacramento uh, Delta area. And she looks over, and I'm going 70 miles an hour. She just pops a gasket. She goes, pull over, pull over right now. She says, if we got a ticket, first off, you'd never get your driver's license. And they'd probably throw me in jail. What are you thinking? Yeah, very calmly, slow down, I, son. Yeah, yeah, very calmly, you know, I pull over and I said, Mom, there was a car in front of me going 70 miles an hour. There's a car behind me going 70 miles. I'm insulated. I'm in the middle. I've got my eyes on the mirrors. She goes, well, you get back on the freeway and you keep it, you know, at the speed limit. So I yeah. go through the gears, get back on the road, and I was back to 70 miles an hour and just kind of, you know, kept it in traffic and all the way there. But it was fun. Oh, my goodness. Well, different times for sure. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure you faced along the way. I like this question because it 
helps us share with others these challenges and more importantly, the lessons we learn from them. So walk us through one of those for us and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your business and your career. Well, you know, I've always been marketing. Later after that experience driving the Porsche, I was able to uh, get into racing and I was always trying to sell myself, you know, so I was um, getting sponsors at early age. I was really into go-karts. In Southern California, I was traveling, of course. So I was at Johansson's Karting Place, just north of Indianapolis Motor Speedway when he first opened it up. And so there's a couple of kart places, uh, Boston and Northern California had one that, that closed. But a um, bunch, bunch of us got around and we thought that we put together a um, indoor automotive motorsports attraction in Southern California. We uh, went to the city, the Orange County, of course, and had a, uh, an enthusiast uh, of a city planner was a race Miata. So he was on board. They got investors on board. We had signed letters of intent, got a building and everything was pretty much ready to rock and roll. And then, of course, uh, recession hit. Mm-hmm. So it was just business, right? Yeah. But uh, one of the, the folks on the team, he uh, was connected on a, on a board, a council he traveled around the world and went to all these indoor world championships for go kart So, you know, like Michael Schumacher was just his birthday. You know, he has a huge indoor place. The Rosberg has it, you know, even uh, Alonzo, he has an indoor outdoor place over in Europe. So these mm-hmm. go-kart centers are huge in Europe. Many years ago, a group of us went to Phoenix and we uh, raced in the last time of the tour came to the United States, the uh, Indoor Karting World Championships. And, um, man, these guys from Belgium or Brazil, they just, you know, they just waxed us. So we, I would say it was, it was an opportunity that just didn't come together. And um, the economics weren't right, but it was going to be right next to Disneyland in Orange County. Everything was was perfect on table. The folks that... Um, put together and worked on Ferrari World Abu Dhabi. They were yeah. involved in the project. So we had all of our ducks in a row, but it, it just didn't come together. But fast forward next July uh, in Charlotte, Victory Lane Indoor Karting is going to host it, the Karting uh, World Championships for the first time in the U.S. in, gosh, 15 years maybe. Mm-hmm. So congrats to that team to uh, bring the world to uh, Charlotte, to uh, Victory Lane uh, in July. It's going to be pretty good. It actually falls on my birthday. I don't want to call out my age or anything, but um, I might uh, go race in the Masters Division if I could uh, lose some LBs and and get back into shape. Well, there you go. Well, it's the new year, so time to get those uh, priorities in line and take care of yourself and uh, get out there on the track for sure. I always said, or I've had people tell me back when I was racing vintage cars, you know, there's a way we can make your car faster, Mark. And I said, what? And he said, put someone else in the driver's seat. (laughs) Like, Thanks a lot for that. But uh, he said, no, you know, lose some weight and you can go a little faster too. It's a lot better than taking weight off the car. But, you know, you mentioned uh, karting. I had Johnny Unser and his daughter Lonnie on the show. He's got a really cool Unser karting center in Denver. Uh, It's an indoor karting center. So it's cool to see more of those over here in the U.S. because I know they're they're big in Europe and uh, they're so much fun. Let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special car. Now, having a mom who had so many cool cars like she did. Maybe she handed one down to you, but what's uh, your first really special car, and what's a memory about that vehicle that you'd like to share? Well, you know, that Porsche was going to be my car. I only had to wait like four more years, and on one of our trips to Monterey for Car Week, uh, it was stolen. Oh, no. And so uh, it was sad, sad deal. So that car went away. And so she, I never was able to get the hand-me-down uh, car, if you will. So my first car was actually a pickup. It was a Datsun, 72 Datsun, and I painted it bright red. And the reason why that car was special is I just started uh, racing hydroplanes in Northern California. Hi- hydroplanes? Oh, my God. Yeah. Family friends were able to convince my mom at uh, 16, 17 that it would be okay, right? <laughs> oh, so um, I traveled all around um, Northern California with this pickup truck, had a little sleeping bag and a little tent in the back. And uh, that was my deal. And and then uh, one time I actually went to um, national championships outside the uh, Illinois, uh, Chicago area, Depew, little pond in the middle of nowhere, uh, just, just west of Juliet, you know, the track out there. Yeah. And um, 
once I, you know, I loved it, did it for many years, got some sponsors, did the boat shows and stuff, but it's, it's a community thing. It's a, it's a hobby thing. Mm-hmm. The same, same folks that have, when I was racing these kids, now their daughters and their sons are racing. So it's very much a, a community sport, but, um, you yeah. know, in Northern California and those lakes, you know, the drought and stuff, it, it had some dry times, but uh, yeah, no doubt. I'm I'm just wondering, as much as your mom was concerned about you racing cars, how you ever convinced her to get in a hydroplane? Oh my gosh, that's just crazy! Oh, what fun! The thing is, is there only like like two or three boats out there, so it wasn't like a pack of of cars yeah. on the track or anything. Yeah. So never uh, never got seriously injured. But I will share one quick story: is I um the last boat I had always looking at the folks over in Europe and they have lay down. So the engines in the back, it's a outboard off the back of a wooden boat about mm-hmm. 10 feet long. So you're laying down on your stomach and your head is in a, a bubble, if you will, like a little Lexan bubble. You have a hand throttle with your left hand and, and you're, you steer a uh, steering with your right hand. And I was up in Oroville where they had that damn crisis a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. This is many, many years ago. So lay down boat and they had a, a measured one mile record course. So one lap or a five lap, a five mile course. At that time, I think the boat went about 65, 70 miles an hour. And so I'm going for this world record. It was a little bit windy. I'm laying down. I got the start on the inside. So I'm going to try to pass. It's an oval. So I'm trying to pass him on the outside. So I'm just on his right sponsor. Somehow the air, the wind shifted. The air came over his boat, went underneath my boat. Next thing I know is I'm looking at the sky. Yeah, airborne. And the, the nose, because the weight, I lifted off the gas, obviously, and it sort of rotated in the air. So I submarined it head first oh, no. in the water. And uh, I'm skipping, skipping on the water. I had my little suit on and a big Simpson, Simpson jacket, you know, with a collar on it and a two-piece driving suit. And, and my pants... Because of the speed and skipping on the water, my pants ripped. Oh, so no. I'm floating in the water half naked, right? <laughs> so there's oh, one female uh, EMT there. And sure enough, she's in the safety boat on one end. And she comes over and she gets on the radio. And she says, you know, he's okay. Just a little shriveled <laughs> up. And, uh, got a, the water's got cold. Concussion. The water's cold. <laughs> yeah, got a concussion. And uh, the boat was actually okay. So by the time I got back to the beach, the team had already got the water out of it. I didn't know at the time, you know, concussion protocol or anything like that. But I ended up going to Home Depot and got some uh, epoxy and a little bit of wood. And and all I had is a crack in the side where I went out the side of it. Raced the next day with a concussion. Of course, now you'd say never, right? And um, didn't set the record, finished second with a broken boat and broken ego. And then that was my last race. That was... uh, folded up those and then and then went into cars and just like you mark i went to laguna seca russell mm-hmm. racing school yep and yep. uh t- took that path to cars yeah yeah that's, that was a fun three-day event and then i stayed for the uh two-day skid pad again at the time they had the vipers which was pretty fun to uh slide a viper around and uh, burn up some tires there so wow what a story well i'm glad you survived that one with just losing your pants uh that's uh i guess the least thing that could happen to you you know, boat accident, racing boat accident. Uh, how about seller's remorse? Is there a vehicle you've owned that you've let go that you really wish you had back? Not so much. Now it's all it's all company cars, and we're very fortunate that we can pick out you know sort of whatever we want. I've I've had a couple uh, manual cars in my past. Probably uh, the one that I was part of the BMW club back in the day and did a lot of autocrossing and had a um, E46 uh, M3 competition. That was a fun little car to uh, hustle around, but um, only had that for a little while and then uh, started the family and and that car uh, went away as I went back to Toyota. I'll tell you, I have one of those in my garage. I bought it new, an E46 M3. I love that car. It's just so much fun to drive. Great great on the track, great on the street, great great to get groceries or to push that little sport button and uh, the thing comes alive. So uh, I'll think of you now every time I jump in my, uh, my E46. And have a little bit of fun. Really, really exciting car. Well, let's talk a little bit about today and this new year and what has you excited about Lexus. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning of our talk, automotive manufacturers are doing some very unique things for their customers these days. It's not the old days of just going to the dealership, walking around, kicking tires and 
uh, trying to get talked into buying a car. You guys are out there interacting with customers in a really, really personal level in a variety of very unique venues. And I love this stuff. I've been invited to many driving events here at the Pacific Raceway with uh, Porsche, BMW, uh, even Rolls-Royce, Bentley, all sorts of cool stuff. So tell us a little bit about what has you excited about what you are doing with Lexus and promoting Lexus in this new year. Thanks for the opportunity. Lexus Performance, the F brand, you know, all the cars, they use the inspiration from Fuji Track for the RCF, the GSF. Those are our performance cars. And then recently, um, the LC500, which is not an, an F car per se. So these are three high performance vehicles. And two years past, we launched Lexus Performance Driving School. And the opportunity to get these people in our cars to experience performance. Uh, the very first one was down at uh, West Palm Beach, uh, the old Moroso track. And we'd have guests show up. And, and they, the first thing I said was, I didn't think Lexus was performance. And we thought of grandma's ES or, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the grandfather's LS big sedan. So it was an eye opener. So fast forward. I was calling to get some tracks last couple of years. We went this year, went to, we started off this year at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I was able to kiss the bricks. And uh, then we went to Daytona. I was on the high banks, did the infield course, which end of the month, uh, Lexus Racing will be at the Daytona for the 24 hour. And then we were lucky to go to Monticello, which is one of those private resorts tracks in, in New York just um, a couple months ago. And so I was calling around and I said, you know, you have to call these tracks a year ahead of time to get yourself booked. So I was calling Laguna Seca, and they said, well, you know what? Our longtime sponsor, Mazda, is uh, pulling out after 17, 18 years. And I said, well, really, you know, what, what's the opportunity there? And so thankfully, uh, Monterey County and the track uh, – which is WeatherTech Raceway now, but we all know and love it as Laguna Seca. We were able to uh, get an agreement where we are the official luxury vehicle of the track. And by doing so, uh, we get to host. Coming up at the end of January is our first event of 2019. So January 24th to 27th, we'll be there. And this is um, allowing guests to experience the cars. We also might have a couple of surprises there as well. They start off just like if you were going to an experience the very first time, you're going to learn, you know, what performance is like, you know, the brakes people nowadays, you know, if they really get on the brakes and the ABS kicks in, they freak out, they lift their foot, which is really the wrong thing to do. So regardless, if you're a, a Lexus owner or enthusiast or the other brands, uh, you're able to take in a full eight hour day. We'll even feed you breakfast and lunch. And you're going to come away from that being a better driver. Uh, we do autocross, and we'll get up to speed on the track. We were just at Daytona, and we we're up to about 140 miles an hour on the high banks, which normal folks on the, on the highway, interstates, you know, what are you going, 55, maybe 65? L.A., of course, everyone goes 80 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, but I was it's just an there. Opportunity. Crazy. <laughs> it's an opportunity to really feel and get up to speed. So very excited. Um, this is the first one of 19. Our website after this event will have a changeover and we'll load in the dates. But we're going to go back into the May. We'll be there in May, August, and November this year for the full-on uh, driving school experience. We're also a partner with USGA Golf. So US Open is actually at Pell Beach this year. And so we're going to have a driving event at the track the weekend before Pell Beach. This will be a complimentary event where you can get your picture taken with U.S. Open Trophy. It'll be the weekend before. So Championship Sunday is on June 16th. And so it'll be the weekend before opportunity to uh, experience the cars in a complimentary, like a not an eight-hour driving school, like, like the full driving school, but maybe hour, hour and a half at your own pace. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the Amgen Tour of California is the cycling event of record in the uh, United States. You know, you have the Tour de France over in France. Yep. And this year, they're making the trek from Sacramento down to Pasadena in May. And so, yes, we'll be at Laguna Seca again. So I'm thinking 
you know, shoot, I'm going to be there about 15, 20 times this year because we have Concor. And, yeah. And uh, I think, in, you know, maybe the expense account, maybe I can rent like a small little bungalow there in, in Pell Beach or, or uh, Pacific Grove. And but they said, no, it's uh, not going to. Oh, man. Well, I was going to say, if you need someone to wash your dishes, I'm right there for you, buddy. <laughs> I'd be happy to. We can rent one of those nice big houses and have a bunch of car friends there. Hang out. I'm sure it'd be cheaper than the hotel. So we'll go back to the bean counters and see what we can work out. I'll tell you, the, uh, the LC500 car that you guys have, talk about a performance car. That thing has a 10 speed direct shift transmission. I mean, I think it's one of the unique transmissions of the time. It's a V8, super powerful. First time I saw one, I'm like, what is that? And I walk around. It's a Lexus. This is really cool. And the RCF, of course. I mean, the cars you guys are putting out now. Uh, yeah, definitely performance cars, always been a top line brand. So very exciting new year for Lexus and especially for you and all these events. Nice frequent fire miles going on for you, Todd. Well, here's a very introspective question for you. If you were a vehicle, tomorrow you woke up and you were a car parked in a garage, what would Todd be and why? Well, I love to go to museums. And if I had to pick the car, I'm looking at the curves, I'm looking at the Art Deco and I have a real fascination for that Mullen Museum, that Bugatti uh, 57 uh, FC Atlantic, if, if yeah. price were, were no object. I have the die cast car of it, but uh, that, that jewel is, is just, uh, it's a beautiful car. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. Well, Todd, up next is the last lap before we put the pedal into the Lexus metal. Let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and the interior? is with a car cover. I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom-made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com, or connect with me through the Cars yeah website at com. Hey, Mark Green here from the Cars yeah podcast. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars yeah TV show? That's right. Cars yeah is now on MAV-TV. I visit some of the past Cars yeah guests and take you along for the ride. Go to MAVTV.com to learn more where you can enjoy Cars yeah TV Mav TV is also available on DirecTV, Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through MavTV.com online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Okay, Todd, we are back and we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. Well, what's the best automotive advice you've ever received? That's a very simple, Mark. Mr. Roger Penske, all my heroes aren't ball players, you know, football or stick and ball players. All my heroes are, are drivers or racers. And when you meet Mr. Penske for the first time, he, he always says to you, effort equals results. Yep. And I've always lived by that from day one. If you put in the effort, you know, it doesn't matter what the opportunity is. You're going to be recognized. Your superiors will see that effort. And it's always uh, been a good direction for myself. Oh, yeah. Uh, what a great guy. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? The best experience I can to suggest to anybody is regardless if it's a friend or a guest, you're networking somewhere. 
is uh, take a step back and listen to everyone's ideas. And for Alexis Way, we always say to Kaizen, we're, we're constantly improving. And we're improving because we're listening to our guests to try to make that experience or, or try to make that, that product better. And so uh, I think listening goes a long way. Absolutely. Some I get to do every day, which I learned a lot of things. I love the Kaizen concept, the sharpening of the saw. Fantastic. Would you share one of your per, uh, resources, I should say, that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, we've talked about it, but the uh, website is simple. It's, it's LexusPerformanceDrivingSchool.com. We do have some seats at the end of January. Um, we'll have some surprises. Maybe I'll just share this out with you right now. Okay. Um, Indy 500 winner, Danny Sullivan. He's going to be our guest ambassador uh, right. that weekend for, uh, for Laguna Seca. Very, very cool. Spin and win, Danny Sullivan. Love it. If you could uh, have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? Um, growing up, I don't know about you, but I was always watching uh, ABC, uh, Wide World of Sports. I would say Sir Jackie Stewart would be the guy who uh, I would love to uh, sit down and enjoy a, something at the pub. It's a beautiful day for for motor racing and, you know, just <laughs> yeah. to listen. Yeah. He's always at historics. He's always at Concor. And yeah. I've, he's, you know, he's so small. I just haven't spotted him. Well, I was very lucky at Pebble Beach about four years ago. I was invited by actually the first woman guest I had on the show, Diane Brandon. She's a longtime Bentley and Rolls Royce expert judge at Pebble Beach. And she invited me up to the judges platform to watch the cars drive over the, the winner's uh, stage there. And sitting to my right was Denise, the late Denise McCluggage, who's been mm. on the show. But do you know who is sitting on my left? Jackie Stewart. I got to sit there and talk with him. I haven't got him on this show yet. He's a very hard guy to nail down. He's very busy. But yeah, that was pretty cool. I had to pinch myself with two icons, one on my right and one on my left. So uh, uh, next time I get him and I get him on the show, I'll put in a good word for you and maybe <laughs> give you a call and you guys can have a chat. Yeah, he like did it. so much for helping with safety in racing as well. Really, really Absolutely. tremendous man. Yeah. Now, how about a book? Is there a book you've read? Do you think our listeners would enjoy? You know, I, I, I travel so much. So usually I, I find myself in, in Barnes and Noble and I uh, page through uh, Keith Martin's uh, Sports Car Market or uh, <laughs> yeah. Paul Fanner's Racer Magazine. But I have this, I have the art of racing in the rain on my stand and I have just haven't cracked it open yet. I think it's been oh. there a year. Yeah. I unpacked I unpacked the boxes from Southern California to Plano, so I know where it is. Mm -hmm. I just have to uh, to pick it up. You know, I'll give you a little tip here too. Uh, Gar Stein, the author of that book, has been a guest on this show. That is the most recommended book, by the way, of over twelve hundred guests here now on Cars. Yeah, and they made a movie about it. It's going to be coming out soon, which will be very very cool. But get the audio version and listen while you're on an airplane. It's really well done. I got it from the library for free. You can download it. Uh, through the Libby app, I think it is. And uh, in fact, that's how I get a lot of my audiobooks through the library. They're all free. Uh, it's a really great, whoever, I don't know who the voice was, but they did a really marvelous job. And I'll tell you something funny, Todd. I was listening to it and working out of my side yard. It's a bit of a tearjerker towards the end. And I think I might have had a tear in my eye. My neighbor goes, Mark, are you okay? Is something wrong? And I, I won't give it away, but I, I said what happened at that point in the book. And she's like, Oh my gosh. And I said, well, it's a book. It's a book. That didn't really happen to me. Uh, so she kind of chuckled, but you got to, you got to read that or listen to it. It's a really, really great book. And I, I can't wait for the movie. Some great uh, folks worked on that. Some of them past guests here, Jeff Swart, who's been on the show and some other folks. And I believe Patrick Dempsey's in that movie as well, or maybe he's the, the backer. I'm not sure. Very, very cool. Well, we're up to the checkered flag, Todd. And this last question, you maybe have already answered this in a way, but we'll see. It could be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car to park in your garage. Doesn't matter how much it costs, but here are the rules. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. You have to drive it. No garage queens here, but you're a performance driving guy. I don't think that's a problem for you. But it's the only cool collector car you can have. So choose wisely. I mentioned that Bugatti earlier in, in the question, but, you know, a modern supercar, you have to go. It's anniversaries coming up. Uh, maybe McLeod. RF1. Um, I've had the pleasure to be around our Lexus LFA cars, you know, V10. So I'd have to pick uh, the McLaren. It's something that's just unattainable, you know, very limited numbers. And I've been very lucky to see a couple at Concord and, and on my travel. So uh, that would be the rocket ship. The McLaren F1. Yeah, I've had to buy a bunch of those cars for guests here on cars. Yeah. 
They are pretty darn cool. I was just uh, thumbing through, uh, I think it was Auto Week magazine a couple weeks ago, and they had pictures of Ralph Lauren's collection. He's got one of those in his collection. He's got the race car version too, so even better. I think it's in bright orange if I remember right. But uh, That would be papaya orange. I have that same car in my die class box. There you go. There you go. Yeah, a very, very nice car. Well, I think that's the one I'll get for you. How does that sound? I'll call Ralph up and see if he'll let that go. You know, quick story is I was at, uh, I was in New York and a friend lives up there in Westchester County. And I said, Hey, do you know where Ralph Lauren's garage is? And, you know, we sponsor not my, de- my department, but uh, New York Fashion Week. And so oh, last yeah. year, the year before, Ralph had his uh, runway in his garage with yes. all the models and food and, and had food service there. And, the, and all the servers were in uniform to uh, yep. overalls. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I left uh, the city, went up to Westchester County and, and got on these back roads. And sure enough, I found the garage. I won't mention where it is, but it's like triple double security, just oh, like yeah. Jay Leno's garage in Burbank. And so I know where it is, but I didn't get a peek inside. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Well, uh, you know, I think very few people get in there. Uh, I've never visited that garage. I've met Mark, who uh, manages his cars for him, and I've seen many of his cars on the lawn at Pebble and other events. One of the finest collections in the world, I think. It's not giant in numbers compared to some people, but in quality, it's it's uh-huh. got to be one of the best. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, maybe we can do a stealth run out there and knock on the door and see if they'll let us in one day. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll get past the first gate, but we can try. Well, Todd, you've taken us on a very cool Lexus ride today. I knew you would. I really enjoyed your stories. I want to thank you for sharing your automotive journey with us today. Some great stories, by the way. Could you offer us a parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off down the track at Laguna Seca in that McLaren F1? You know, um, I've always been very fortunate with my opportunities. And, and some say, you know, you have to be at the right place at the right time in your uh, career path. Well, it might be true. But if you see the opportunity, if you put yourself in that situation, you have to take advantage of it. Don't let uh, don't let the road pass you by. Absolutely. And what's the best way, again, for our listeners to learn more about you and Lexus? Um, for driving school, simply uh, LexusPerformanceDrivingSchool.com. I'm on the Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn, but I uh, I don't uh, I'm not very active on those deals. I uh, follow the Lexus racing team that. Uh, AIM, Vassar Sullivan is is down at uh, the Roar right now. So I I got some pictures. I just shared those on my Facebook page. But um, yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for the opportunity. Yeah, this was great fun. And again, listeners, you can find everything Todd has shared on his Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com. Type in Todd Lewis and that page will pop up. Check out Lexus. Check out their performance driving school. Uh, Attend one of these events because uh, you will be blown away at what Lexus is putting on the road out there today. Todd, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with me and the listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much, Mark. Take care. You too. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah. Yeah.